Hey, how's it going everyone? Um, today, a little bit of a different video. Uh, it's gonna be a lot more educational, not much footage. Uh, we got some new hires coming in, so we're just gonna kinda go back to the basics. All right, so this is going to be a reach-in cooler cap tube system. <clears throat> so let's just quickly identify compressor, condenser. This is a TXV, but I don't have a drawing of a cap tube and a filter dryer, but your filter dryer would be here. That's where we would take our pressures off. Our evaporator coil, and then here's our stubby off the compressor where we would be taking our pressures. So we're gonna go back between our refrigeration cycle chart and our R134A PT chart. So we are using R134A. Uh, the ambient temperature is gonna be 70 degrees, and our desired box temperature is 34 Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna quickly calculate this. I did make a video on this uh, that goes into detail. I will pin it up in the corner here. But just quickly, so our desired box temp is 34 Fahrenheit. Our EVAP TD is 20. So that's gonna give us 14 Fahrenheit. And then if we go on our PT chart here, 14 Fahrenheit actually equals 14.4 PSI. Let's just call it 14 PSI. And then for our head pressure, we're just going to take our ambient and add our condenser split. In this case, it's a 30 Fahrenheit condenser split. So we go 70 Fahrenheit. We're going to add 30 Fahrenheit. And that's going to give us 100 Fahrenheit. Let's go over to our PT. 100 Fahrenheit is going to give us 124.2. Let's just call that 124 PSI. All right, so let's go plug these in, 14 and 124. So we head back over to our refrigeration cycle chart. So our suction pressure here is 14 PSI and our head pressure is 124 PSI. All right, so these are the pressures that we're looking for. Um, because it's a cap tube, the pressure shouldn't really change unless the box is super hot, but let's assume you know, the box is not hot. We're at desired temperature. So I'll be making a video in the next probably three, four weeks I'm going to try that just going over uh, common symptoms we see in these reach-in coolers and reach-in freezers. So basically, um, I'm not going to go into super detail with that right now, but we should not be checking pressures if our evaporator coil's frozen up, if our evaporator fan's not working, if our condenser fan's not working, and if our condenser's not plugged. Okay, so today's video is based on we only gauge up once we make sure all those things are good and the compressor's running and we have amp draw. It's not going on overload. So I will make another video on that. But today is you've checked all these things. You don't gauge up unless all these things are happening. Okay. So when we go over to our chart showing uh, why is the pressure, suction pressure low and head pressure low and all the other um, combinations of that. Okay, that's assuming that all those things are working. All the fans are working, there's no ice up, and the compressor is running. Okay, so the first symptom we're going to go to is low, low. Our suction pressure is low, so let's just call it 2 PSI. Most likely we'll be in a vacuum. And our head pressure is low as well. So you can see we're looking for 14 and 124. We're getting 2 and 70. All right, so our suction pressure low and our high side pressure is low. Okay, so that can happen for two reasons. Okay, either we have a low charge or we have a restriction in the system. Okay, so that's the only time we're gonna get low and low. Okay, and then as you've seen in a lot of my videos, when it is low and low, what we wanna do is add the charge in. If the charge does not, if our suction pressure does not come up, it means we are restricted in the system. So if we start adding refrigerant in, and this stays around two, three PSI, and this kind of hovers around 70, goes up to 80, just say our charge is six ounces or eight ounces, and we put in six more ounces, this, the pressures are not moving. It means we have a restriction, it's gonna be in this cap tube. So what we're gonna do is remove the filter dryer, and we're gonna leave one end of the filter dryer capped. We're gonna blow through until we clear out that filter dryer. Okay, if we start adding refrigerant and then this starts moving up to 14 and this starts moving up to 124, we know we're low on charge. And at that point, we will be doing a leak test, which you see me doing a lot of. I do a lot of leak tests. And that's how we determine if we have low pressure on the suction and the high side. 
So our next symptom is going to be low suction and high head. So same two PSI on the suction and then 170 PSI here. This is not going to be common on a cap tube. I've just added as a combination, but really you're not going to see this. Um, TXV for sure you can see this, but on a cap tube, it's not going to be likely. So this can happen if we have a low charge and um, we have non-condensables in the system. So this becomes a little bit confusing because if we have low, if we have non-condensables, the suction pressure should be actually higher. But if we're low on charge plus non-condensables, so this one's not super common. Okay, so we're really not going to focus on this one. I just added this one just so we have it every combination. All right, so our next combination is high and low. So let's say we have 35 psi, and then on our high side, let's call this 90 psi. Okay, so we're high and low. So what that means is, okay, the compressor's pumping. So just say we equalize the system. When we equalize the system, let's just call it 70 suction, 70 on the high side. Once the compressor starts, the suction pressure pulls down. Okay, and then our head pressure will bump up. Okay, assuming the charge is good, and in this case, uh, if we're not sure if the charge is good or not, we can pull it and weigh it. And that's most likely what we will probably do. Because what this means is the compressor is bad. So if we're at 70 PSI, it's supposed to pull down to 14. If it's not pulling down to 14, okay, that means uh, the compressor is not pumping correctly. Same thing on the high side. It's supposed to pump up to 124 from 70. When it's equalized, it's only getting to 90. Okay, so I see a lot of technicians make this mistake. Uh, this one's a pretty common one. So if we have high suction and low high side, it means we have a bad compressor. It is not pumping correctly. All right, and the last symptom we have is high and high. So let's call this one 35 again. And we'll leave this at 170. So we're high and high. Okay, so what happens when this happens is means we have non-condensables in the system. Okay, so that means the refrigerant's no longer any good. And how we get non-condensables, it can happen for a couple reasons. Uh, it can happen from the previous tech just not following proper refrigeration procedures. Maybe they didn't pull a proper vacuum. Maybe they left nitrogen in there. All kinds of reasons. But the most common one is you, the condenser was plugged. Okay, so when the condenser's plugged, the, refrigeration, the refrigerant's overheating. Okay, when it overheats, it almost makes like a sludge in there. Okay, when that happens, the refrigerant's definitely bad. So if we have high and high and our condenser is now clean, it means we have non-condensables in the system. All right, so now I just want to circle back and just go over these quickly and uh, just go over things that I see technicians mi misdiagnose. Okay, so low and low. I see this one get diagnosed wrong a lot and a lot of technicians think the compressor's bad, okay? So if we go on over to our refrigeration cycle chart, all right, so we have two PSI and 70 PSI, okay? So just say we equalized at, um, let's call it 60 PSI. So the system's equalized at 60 PSI. And then when the technician sees this is coming down to 2 PSI, they think the compressor's bad, okay? But if we were at 60 PSI and it pulled all the way down below 14, that's telling me the compressor valves are good. They're pumping like they should be, okay? The head pressure's low, yes, because we're low on gas, okay? Or we have a restriction. So I see this one done very commonly. It gets misdiagnosed a lot where the suction pressure's low and you think the compressor's bad. Okay, if the compressor is pulling below this 14 PSI and we've equalized around 60, the valves are pumping correctly. And then another common thing I see on low and low, and this is probably the most common we see is low suction, low head, is whether it's a low charge or a restriction. So like I discussed earlier, we add a little bit of charge in and we see what happens to the pressures. If the pressures come up, well, guess what? We have a leak. If the pressures don't come up, we have a restriction. It's most likely in that cap tube and we'll swap out the filter dryer and try to blow it out. I've had maybe three cap tubes I've ever had to change. Uh, I've had really good success blowing them out. Some of the cap tubes are a little bit of a pain to replace and they're just time consuming. And then some, on the, some of the true units, um, 
they're foamed in so you can't even replace them you got to run them from outside the unit so it just becomes a a huge pain to do that and then the more common one i see here is this high low okay so high suction and low head all right so if we have high suction and low head okay people will confuse confuse this for uh, low on charge or a restriction if we have a restriction we'll be below 14 psi if the charge is correct okay and like I've even tried to like overcharge a system and you'll see the head pressure maybe go up, but the suction will not go up. Okay, so I see this one get diagnosed a lot, um, especially when there is a TXV, which we're not going to get into. But anytime we have high suction, low head. So let's say that we're equalizing at 60 PSI. Okay, if we're at 60, it should pull down to here if the valves are pumping to 14 PSI. Okay, if we're staying at 35 that's no good. And same thing on the high side. And this is assuming the charge is good. So whenever I see this, I like to pull the charge and just put the charge in and see what happens. So if we start at 60 PSI, okay, this should be ramping up to 124. If it's not, and it's staying at 70 and the charge is good, it's telling me the valves in the compressor are bad.